fellow golfers, most people truly believe they suck at golf. And I don't exaggerate. If we all thought we were good at golf, why would there be 60 million excuses for when we do not perform as we expect to? For instance, only recently a top player said it was his equipment to blame for his poor performance. But again, with the driver right now, the driver sucks. Not one of the world's 60 million golfers has ever wondered whether it could be the golf swing, not the golfer, that is to blame. Well, naturally, I'm an exception and believe 100% that it is the typical golf swing that's to blame. I've thought about little else for the past 30 years and I've found every possible opportunity to research ideas that might make the golf swing more effective, including during my master's and doctoral degree work. And because I was a golf instructor for many years before I went to graduate school, it was easy to spot all the sciences I needed to study further, and the obvious one to me was the need to understand more about musculoskeletal anatomy. And as I studied more and more musculoskeletal anatomy, first at a chiropractic and then at a medical school, it became more and more apparent that we cannot simply ask the body to move here and move there like Mr. Fantastic or one of those superheroes, you know what I mean. So, after many years of thinking about and researching the subject, I have come up with a simple mathematical formula termed an anatomic quotient or anatomic handicap. And just like your golf handicap, the lower your quotient is, the better. For instance, 20 divided by 5 gives us the higher quotient of 4, compared to 10 divided by 5, which gives us the lower quotient of 2, and it is better to have a handicap of 2 than 4. Here's how the anatomic quotient is calculated. Each change of direction of body segment motion from the top of the backswing to impact is given a score of 1. For each direction in which that body part moves. The sum of all moving body parts in all directions forms the numerator of my formula. For instance, if the head, as determined by cervical spine movement, tilts in a different direction from its position at the top and also rotates and forward bends differently, the head-neck region alone would score 3 and so on. Why does this matter? Because a separate set of muscles would typically be required to perform each motion but the central nervous system or CNS is forced to make many movements at once to simplify the downswing. Now those motions will certainly bring the club to the ball somehow, but somehow without proper sequencing is not enough. Of course, calculating the actual total for my numerator in my anatomic quotient formula is a little more complicated because it would not be right to ascribe a similar scoring system to the shoulder, elbow and wrist joints. Why not? Because the arms are locked together at the grip end of the club, forming what is known as a closed kinetic chain. In such a chain, when one arm joint is moved in a particular direction, the other one is pulled along in lockstep. The legs too form a closed kinetic chain because the feet are fixed to the ground, so what one leg does affects the other. Then too, one should ideally allot a higher score to torso movement because it is a heavy and difficult body part to move and signaling by the brain to the torso muscles is far more limited and slow. Once the total score for each and every each segment's downswing movements is determined, it is divided by the time a golfer's club head takes to go from the top of the backswing to impact. Why? Because the faster a golfer swings, the more reason there is for the CNS to find a common strategy to move the many parts the golfer needs to move to get the golf club from the top to impact. With greater speed, the golfer cannot easily control body parts for any desired sequencing. Does that mean slower speed might be better? Absolutely not. It simply means a lot of the extra motion that the golf swing really does not need should be excised from every golfer's swing. I must add here that it is, of course, an inarguable fact that more movement creates a greater quantity of motion 
otherwise known as momentum but is the resulting club motion directed in a desired direction and what is the likely variability of excessive movement taking place rather randomly in all three dimensions from one swing to the next and here's my proof for how the cns modifies movement when it is made at greater speed after a backswing with too many moving parts watch any golfer speed train with the variety of gadgets available in the market these days they will inevitably have an over the top downswing movement which i define as one in which the trail shoulder blade is protracted forward of the trail toe at impact often with considerable side bend too that happens because the cns uses the strategy of gravity to drop the entire trail side down together when time is very short and those are the very downswing movements that cause inconsistency the conscious thoughts required for specific sequencing can probably not be processed as easily within a short time frame and sequencing becomes even more critical under pressure when the levels of fight or flight hormones rise and muscles contract much faster and much more forcefully need more convincing try this drill from the top of your back swing tilt your trail ear towards your trail shoulder straighten just your elbows and wrists rotate your torso and finally side bend the trail side of your torso these are just four random parts of the golf swing but take some time to make independently because each body parts muscles must receive specific instructions from the brain and that takes some time given the speed at which nerves are able to conduct messages and the slight delay from the electrical signal arriving to the mechanical movement taking place you can see from this drill that moving disparate body parts takes time which we do not have so the cns will use some strategies to move many body parts simultaneously to hurry along the downswing even when a correct pelvis before thorax sequence is well grooved as soon as the swing speeds up such as when a golfer is under pressure partial strategy strategy changes take place to help move many body parts quickly resulting in a non ideal club position at impact to have a consistent golf swing a from the inside path is vital which is indicated by the trail shoulder being behind the trail toe at impact as a golfer's backswing gets more complicated and more body parts are moved in many and randomly sequenced directions during the backswing the more variability there will be from swing to swing and thus club face and club head control will not repeat easily especially as the cns tries somehow to hurry up the entire downswing given that every golfer takes 1/3 of a second or less only in that phase of the movement and this is the very reason even top players have unexpected two way misses even with their superior cobra clubs it's all to do with the excessive motion of the typical backswing folks why not then use a golf swing that limits the number of movements of the various body parts to get from the top of backswing to impact by having restricted unwanted movement during the backswing specifically a swing that locks out the excessive backswing motion of big body segments such as the head torso and legs allowing the feet to gain strong purchase against the ground and the pelvis to rotate firmly against planted resisting legs the less backswing movement made the easier it is to return all body parts to the club smoothly and effectively when specific movements of specific joints are locked out during the backswing it facilitates desirable downswing sequencing in a completely organic or natural manner such a swing positions all body segments at the top so that they move in perfect sequence like a falling stack of dominoes does the pure sequence takes place because many common muscle fibers of earlier moving parts pull the later moving parts along requiring less active muscle force for the entire downswing motion golfers this is the 21st century 
Surely we should expect more from the golf swing of today than the 15th century shepherds of Scotland did when they first developed the game we all love so much. Please do like and share this very important post. It's time to help more golfers get better.